looking for something from him and not from me because there's right. nothing I can do or give you. And I'm glad he can supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Amen. Jesus. Amen. I've got good news. He's already gave you Christ. Amen. All of our needs have already been supplied yeah. and been met. Amen. Amen. But if you got your Bible, turn with us in 1 Samuel chapter 17. We're going to read what many of us would consider a kid's story here tonight. And I'm glad all Scripture was given by the grace of God. I'm glad that it's profitable, aren't you? I'm glad there's some things that are profitable today in our religion. There's a lot of things that aren't worth anything. And, and they won't bring any good. And they won't help you. But I'm glad there's still some things that are profitable even in 2021, aren't you? If you got your Bible, chapter 17, for time's sake, we'll begin reading in verse 32. And I won't read but about a dozen verses. So you keep your Bible up. We might go back and... Grab a couple more. First Samuel 17 and verse 32. The Bible said, And David said to Saul, Let no man's heart fail because of him. Thy servant will go and fight with this Philistine. And Saul said to David, Thou art not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for thou art but a youth, and he a man of war from his youth. Isn't that the way it is anytime something big comes and, yeah. and we're scared of it? David wasn't scared of the army. He, wasn't, he was scared of one particular yeah. thing, one particular person, yeah. one particular incident, one particular issue. And the people that ought to have been backing him and encouraging him said, hey, Miss Christie, you can't do that. You're not good enough. You're not big enough. Maybe we need some folks to encourage us to yeah. stand out that we're in. Yeah. I don't need to get any more discouraged. You don't need to get any more discouraged. I don't need to be kicked while I'm down. You don't need to be kicked while you're down. Amen. We need somebody saying you need to go and God's going to go with you and God's going to give you the victory. The battle's his and the victory's mine and the victory's sweet. We need to be reminded of those. I just want to underline those things for you as we continue reading. He said, And David said unto Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep. And there came a lion and a bear and he took the lamb out of the flock. And I went out after him and I smote him and and I delivered it out of his mouth. And when he had arose against me, I caught him with his beard and smote him and slew him. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear. And, and this uncircumcised Philistine should be as one of them. Seeing he hath defied the armies of the, God, of the living God. Yeah. David said, Moreover, the Lord hath delivered me out of the paw of the lion and, and out of the paw of the bear. And he will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said unto David, Go, the Lord be with thee. And Saul armed David with his armor, and he put a uh, put a helmet of brass upon his head, and, and also the, armed him with a coat of mail. And David girded the sword upon his upon his armor, and he essayed to go, for he had not proved it. And, and David said unto Saul, I cannot go with these, for I have not proved them. And, and David put them off. Isn't that funny how when somebody finally stands up to go after they've been discouraged for so long that, that all right, if you're going to go, let me wait you down with some things before you go. Let me put this on you and put that on you and do this and do that. Every time you, you want to do a little bit of something for somebody, do a little bit of something for God, no good deed goes unpunished. You remember that because the more you're willing, the more that you're able, the more you're going to get put on you. But he's like, here, just carry this and take that. And, and everybody said, you didn't hear a word that I just said. I said, God took care of me. I'm not trusting in this. I'm not trusting in that. I'm going to put my faith and trust in him. And I'm going to go with him. Sure, David probably felt like somebody, the little ruddy shepherd boy. He's got the king's armor on him. He's got the king's sword in his hand. And it'd been real easy for David to get head in high behind at that point. And he is saying to go, he said, wait a minute. This ain't why I'm here. This is not why I'm going. This ain't what I'm supposed to take. I'm not supposed to take his sword. I've got an even better sword. Amen. But there's a lot of things going on. I wish I had time to deal with all of it. But I'm trying to hurt. So, so and, and, he, and he took all these things. And, and then, he, then he says, I've not proved them. So he took them off. In verse 40. And, and he took his staff and his hand. And he chose him five smooth stones out of the brook. And, and he put them in a shepherd's bag, which he had, even in script. And, and his sling was in his hand. And he drew near to the Philistine. And the Philistine came on and drew near to unto David. And the man that bared the shield before went before him. And, and when the Philistine looked about and, and saw David, he disdained him. Him, for he was but a youth and ruddy and of a fair countenance. And the Philistine said unto David, Am I a dog that thou comest to me with staves? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. And, and the Philistine said, 
to David, Come to me, and I will give thy flesh to the fowls of the air and the beasts of the field. And then David said to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sport and, and with a spear and, and with a shield, but I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, yeah. the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defiled. This day will the Lord deliver thee into mine hand, and I will smite thee and take thine head from thee, and I will give the carcass of the host of the Philistines this day to the fowls of the air and to the wild, wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. And all the assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with sword or with spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you in our hands. Amen. And I began to think about that. Here he rose up, and he's ready to go, and, and this come, and that come. And there's things you face in your life, and things I face in my life, and it seems like the more the Lord tries to build us up and encourage us and to help us, man, the devil just keeps sending stuff. Well, I would go budge, or I could go budge, or you've got all these issues and all these problems and all these things, and they just keep compounding. And I thought, man, that, that's pretty rough. But as I already said, let's start over. Forget all that other stuff. This is a very familiar story. We, we consider it a child story, David and the giant and all these things. But what we must realize, we've already said, all, script, all Scripture is given by the inspiration of God. And he said it was profitable. That's right. He's profitable. There's life, life application, things that you and I can glean from, things that you and I can grow from, things that you and I can cling to yes. from Genesis to the Revelation. And we can grab a hold of these truths and we can hide them in our hearts. We might not sin against God. And there's precious promises on our journey that can help Help us along the way. But I want you to notice first, we know this all too well, but I want you to see the first thing that happens here, the enemy attacks. We know that we've got an enemy tonight. He's a roaring lion, seeking who may devour, walking to and fro. And we know that he comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. We understand all that stuff. But I begin to think tonight that sometimes our lives seem like a constant battle. There's a physical battle. There's an emotional battle. There's financial battles. There's spiritual battles. And it doesn't matter if you're at church. It doesn't matter if you're at home by yourself. It doesn't matter if you're out in the community. It seems like it's one battle right after the next. And we get through this one. We think, man, I'm good for a few days. And, and then here comes Satan again. And he just keeps coming and he keeps coming. But any time the enemy attacks, there's got to be a purpose for this attack. And you say, preacher, what do you mean a purpose for this attack? Look in verse number 9 in 1 Samuel 17, verse 9. We'll see the purpose of the enemy. If he, if the Bible said in verse number 9, if he be able to fight with me, and to kill me, then we will be servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then shall he be our servants and serve us. There's one out there tonight that had us in bondage when we were lost. You're not never been saved. You're still dead in trespasses and sin, but you're in bondage of things of this world. I talk to people each and every day. They say, boy, we want to quit this. We want to start doing that. And they got these good plans and these good ideas, kind of like Adam and Eve in the garden when they sinned. They took and they, they took those big leaves and they covered their but you know what happens? Those leaves rot and deteriorate over time. Or, or the wind blows and those things turned upside down. And they don't cover up or hide anything. But I'm God when God does something. He does it eternal. He does it everlasting. Amen. And He does it where it makes a difference. But even though we've been saved and born again by the good grace of God we had tonight, the devil still desires to steal. He still desires to kill. He still desires to destroy. He wants to keep you in bondage tonight. You can read about God's chosen people, the elect of God, the children of Israel. God's people. I don't care what anybody says. They're God's. They're special. You better keep your hands and your mouth and everything else off of them for that matter. But the thing is, they would rejoice and they would serve God and they'd praise God. God would bless them and give them the victory. And that enemy would come. And they would end up in Egyptian bondage. They'd end up in this bondage. They'd end up in that bondage. And if God's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore, that's what happens to you and me. We're saved and we're sealed and we're secured until the day of His redemption. I understand all those things. I believe those things God for them. But you have troubles. You have trials. You have tribulation. You have all these things. And I'm glad we can rejoice and we can be of good cheer because He's overcome the world. I understand that. But where's our shout going? Where's our joy going? Where's, where's our victory going? going? We've been brought back in bondage. Things God's already given us victory over. Things God's already brought us through. Things yeah. God's already taken care of. Yeah. Preacher, I'm, I'm over that. Well, sure you are. Why is it in your mind? Why are you thinking about it? You, Lord. I talk to people all the time. I've done forgive and I've done forgot. Well, that's all you talk about. That's what's on your mind all the time. 
it's on your mind, it's in your heart. Why? Because from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. We speak, we speak destruction, we speak defeat, we speak discouragement, we speak all these things. This man has come out and, and he spoke and he said, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And the greatest army in my mind that ever lived, the, the one the God of Israel looked out for, is sitting down defeated and discouraged. Yeah. <laughs> but what's this army a picture of, Brother Willie? I think it's a picture of type of the church. Everybody's saved and born again by the good grace of God tonight. It's a member of God's army. Amen. There's a place for you, amen. We've been called into service. We've been told to fight the good fight, to keep the faith. I want to be like Paul. I want to finish my course, amen. I want to do all those things. But tonight it seems like all the fights between our own soldiers. It's hard to win a war. We're wounding each other. David was sitting down there with his father. His father said, hey, I want you to go down. And he went, he obeyed his father. He rose up early in the morning and ran down there, let out a battle cry, and that's exactly what his father said. Yes. When he got down there, who was it turned on? It wasn't him. It was the brethren. Amen. It was the brethren. But I'm glad God will give us victory over the brethren. Amen. Amen. But David didn't get mad at them. David didn't beat them up. There's more than a few sheep. We know what you've come here for. But I come here to serve God. What you come for? Amen. It doesn't matter how much you're, how much God I've got or how little I've got. Little's much, honey, when God's in it. Amen. And I'm glad God's faithful and able to take care of it. Well, see, the purpose of the attack, they desire to put them in bondage. He desires to discourage and to defeat us. Preacher Bible just said that, verse 24. And all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, they fled from him and they were so afraid. This is one man. One man. When they saw him. Not when they saw them, when they saw him. Sure, he's big. Sure, he's mean. Sure, he's bad. But my God's bigger than all my problems. He's bigger than all my faults. He's bigger than all my fears. He's faithful. Amen. Lord, praise Thank you, Lord. Holy name. Yes. Thank you, Lord. David, some little old ruddy shepherd boy knew more about God than any of these men did. Yeah. He said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? He said, ain't nothing special about him. Ain't nothing big or mighty about him. He said, I'll go down there myself in the name of the Lord. We need some people that know who God is. We need some people to realize the goodness and the grace and the mercy and the power and the presence of God in their life. Amen. And they're willing to take a stand. Yes. Amen. They'd have been back in bondage again if everybody stayed sitting down. You want to know why our church is in the shape they're in? Because you and I won't take the stand that we need to take. Yes, preacher. Because we won't stand up for what's right. Well, preacher, I know. For he that knows do good and doth it not to him it's sin. Amen. So we're living in sin, asking God to bless it and revive it. God's not reviving sin. God's not waking at sin. Amen. That's right. God's going to judge sin. Amen. He said, preacher, he's big. I understand it's the size of the giant. Verse number four. And then went out of the cha out of champion. And the camp of the Philistines named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits in a span. This man's almost nine foot tall. Yeah, he's big. He's big. Yeah, he's big. I, I don't, I've never seen that I know of, Brother Woody, but one of you, Miss Christie, Brother, uh, Brother Ross, maybe one of y'all can help me. I've never seen Saul's height as far as measurement. But I see he was a head taller than the rest of them when the children of Israel desired him as king. He wasn't God's appointed king, but they desired him. So he's a pretty good sized man. Yeah. Amen. But they wasn't serving Saul. I know David's brothers were bigger than he was, but David wasn't scared to stand up to them and just keep going. Amen. Preacher, what are you saying? I'm saying out of all your issues and problems tonight, there's one that you're more scared of than others. And God probably just revealed that one to you. You know what it is. Job, in the midst of all his troubles and trials, he said, the thing that I feared most has come upon me. I don't know what that thing is. I've read and studied forward, backwards, and sideways. But he's lost his children. He's lost his riches. His life's turned away from God. I believe that he couldn't get a hold of God, that he didn't have the fellowship that he once had. Is what I believe. But he said, that one thing that I feared the most has come upon me. We see the size of the giant. And you say, preacher, that doesn't sound much. Well, he's almost nine foot tall. And then we read a little further in verse 5, and he had a helmet of brass upon his head. Well, that's not too bad. He was armed with a coat of mail, and the weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of brass. And he had greaves of brass upon his legs, and a 
and a, a target of brass between his shoulders and the staff of his spear was, was a weaver's beam and, and his spear's head weighed 600 shekels of iron and, and one bearing a, a shield went before him. So he wasn't by himself. Here's David all by himself. Ain't that what happens when the devil attacks? You can be in a crowd. There can be a million people there and God makes you feel, and the devil makes you feel all alone. So here's the, the Philistine. His, his brothers are there with him. And I don't know how many more is in the Philistine army. But they're scared of war. And here this man comes. And he's got a shield. He's got some form of religion. He's got some form of protection. He's, he's cursing David with his gods. Little G. And everybody's scared to death of that. I don't know, maybe maybe the, the army of Israel, like the church, just sit down, Brother Ross, and thought, it'll go away. Yeah. You know, after we don't fight with him, if we don't bother him, I kept nest of bees out there, if we don't stir them up, they might just move on and go away and, yeah. and not hurt us or not hinder us. And, and that's what we do with our problems. We'll just play ostrich and just bury our head in the sand and, right. and everything will be better tomorrow or the next day or the day after. No, this is a continuous problem. Preacher, why would you say that? I'm glad you asked. Verse number 23. And as he talked with them, behold, there came up the champion, the Philistine of Gath, the life by name, out of the armies of the Philistines, and spake according to the same words. So he said it before. He's threatened them before. He's brought the trouble before. The issue's been there. I don't know how long they've been there. They've been there long enough to quit. It could have been days. It could have been weeks. It could have been months. It could have been years. I don't know. I know the God that I serve could have took care of it in a matter of moments if I just put my faith and trust in it. Preacher, what are you saying? I'm saying we must do something about our enemy. We can't stay defeated forever. Notice the whole army of Israel sit down. And the only fighting is amongst themselves. That's what the devil does. That's what he'll do in your home. That's what he'll do in your job. That's what he'll do in your church. He'll get us to a place where we're so worried about this and we're worried about that and we'll beat up and storm one another instead of standing for an almighty God. Amen. Preach it. Our family, our friends, the brethren turn against us. The buster seat and said, the brethren, the brethren may butcher, the clergy may criticize, but there's a faithful friend. Amen. There's one that's sticking closer than a brother, one that loves at all times. Yeah. Picture what are you dealing with? What are you talking about? David's going to remind us here in our text something that you and the devil don't want you to remember. The devil don't want you to know. I'm going to preach for a few minutes after drawing this illustration on a simple thought. This ain't my first battle. This ain't my first battle. That's what David speaks in the tale in verses 34 through 37. Watch this again. And David said to Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep, and, and there came a lion and a bear, and he took a lamb out of the flock. And, and then I went out after him, and I smote him, and delivered him out of his mouth. And, and when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard, and I smote and slew him. The servant slew both the lion and the bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine be one of them, seeing he hath defiled the armies of the living God. Yeah. David said, Moreover, the Lord hath delivered me out of the paw of the lion, out of the paw of the bear, and he delivered me out of the hand of this Philistine. He remembered how I've had problems before. Yeah. I've had issues before. This ain't my first rodeo. This ain't my first battle. This ain't my first problem. But I'm glad David had enough sense about him to realize that, that David didn't win the battle, that David didn't get the victory. God was the one that got it. Amen. Let me ask you a question now. This giant's nine foot tall. I don't know how big the bear is, and I don't know how big the lion is. But he reached up and he grabbed that thing by the beard. He doesn't smote it and jerk the lamb out of its mouth, so he's done got it mad. It's hungry and it's chewing on the, on the lamb. And now he's going to smite the thing and he's going to jerk food out of its mouth. A dog that don't even bite, if you mess with its food, it's going to bite you most of the time. And now you've got to hit a lion, and you've got to hit a bear, and you jerk something out of its mouth, and then you reach up and grab it by the beard. That's, big boy. That's fair hand. What would you rather fight tonight? A lion, a bear, a nine foot tall man? Huh? Watch him, Lord. Toss his boy, David, there ain't no way. There ain't no way. 
I'm glad when David spoke up to Saul, he didn't say, hey, you don't know how big and tough I am, man. I'm a mighty man. I'm this, that, and the other. He said, you know what he said in reality? He said, Saul, it's very obvious. You don't know my God. You don't know what my God's able to do. You don't know how faithful he is. You don't know how mighty he is. You don't know how present he is. You don't know how powerful he is. Saul, you don't know how much he loves me. That's what it won't man. The love of God is greater than oh, man. Saul, you don't know how much God loves me. There's things that I face each and every day. Some of them I see, some of them I know, and some of them God keeps me from. But all of them He keeps me through. Bless Him, Lord. Amen. You see, we get so focused on the situation. We get so tied up with the circumstance that we can't see the Savior. Miss Christie, you know how big the sun is, the circumference of it. You know those numbers by chance, not trying to put you on the spot for being a teacher. I used to know that. They, what they told me that they were. And that thing's great old big. Get your great big burning ball of fire, and if you look at it long enough, it'll burn your eyeballs out. But you can take something very small and minute. Just look it. It's not very big, is it? What is that, about 6 by 8, 6 by 10, something maybe? I don't have measure tape. Well, not very big, but you turn that thing like this, I can't see anything. Mm -hmm. We've got so tied up and so involved in one issue or one problem, and sure it's big to you, and it's big to me, and, and I'm not trying to dumb it down or belittle it by any means. It's big, it's hurtful, and it's real. My right. God's more bigger than that. Right. God can take care of that. Amen. He's faithful and able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all I can ask or I can think. You don't think you can take care of one issue or one problem? Jesus told Simon Peter, he said, On this rock I'll build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. He didn't say they wouldn't attack. He said they wouldn't get the victory. Amen. Aren't you glad for that? They won't get the victory. Amen. I don't care how much that devil roars. I don't care how much he growls. I don't care how big his teeth are, how big his claws are. Amen. I'm glad tonight I'm protected. Amen. I've got one looking after me. I've got one taking care of me. Yeah, it, he told Simon Peter, said, Simon, the devil has desired to have you and sift you as weak. And I'm glad he didn't stop there, did he? Nevertheless, I'm praying for you that you're faithful. Thank you. Aren't you glad that he's only there making intercessions for you and I hearing our prayers? Aren't you glad he looks over Brother Gary to the Father every once in a while? He said, Brother Gary Hensley's going through a rough time right now. The devil in the world's upon him. Daddy, I need you to reach down and give him some extra mercy. God, I need you to give him some grace. God, I need you to intercede upon his behalf. And I'll guarantee you, the Father's not going to tell the Son no. Amen. There might be times you and I can't get a prayer through but I guarantee you this What a wonderful thought he's praying for. And he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He's not a respecter of persons. You know what that means? That means he's praying for you too. He sees the weights and the burdens and the cares of this world and this life and how they weigh upon you and how they weigh upon me. If God be for us, who can be against us tonight? Amen. If God be for us, it doesn't matter if it's a lion. It doesn't matter if it's a bear. It doesn't matter what it is. If God be for us. We'll reverse that thought for just a minute. If God be against you tonight, who can be for you? I'm glad he's able to stand in the fiery walls of the devil. And you and I can Bless stand him. tonight by his grace and able. Bless there ain't him. nobody can stand before God any longer than he wants him to stand. It's a fearful thing, he said, to fall into the hands of the living God. Preacher, what are you saying? I don't want you to stay there very long tonight, but I'm going to ask you this. How many battles have you faced? Bless him, Lord. There's been times in our life we thought, oh, what was it, old Fred Sanford said, this is the big one, Elizabeth. I, yeah, I'm done. We thought that. We thought, I'll never get through this. I can't handle this. I can't deal with it. And that's the reality. You can't. But I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Because it's not my strength. It's not my power. Paul besought the Lord thrice that he might come and remove the thorn from his flesh. 
And what did God do? He came to the room and said, No! He said, Paul, my grace is sufficient for thee. Amen. And he said, In weakness, and I'll make strong. And Paul said, I would rather glory in my infirmities that the power of God might abide upon me. Amen. Preacher. I remember not long after I got saved, man, I wanted God to use me. And I prayed this Kathy. I said, God, would you take me? God, would you use me? God, would you help me? And I had never had so many problems in my life. Lord, I want to be used of you. And I've got all these issues and problems. God, would you take this way? God, would you remove that? And it was like the Holy Ghost asked me, he said, do you want to be used or not? Amen. Jesus is referred to as Christ so many times throughout the life. Because that's what he was. Christ is a sacrifice. Christ is a suffering. Christ is shame. Christ is all over. And we claim to be a Christian, which is a little Christ. That means there's going to be times of sacrifice. There's going to be times of suffering. There's going to be times of shame. But I'm glad there's times of victory too, won't you? This ain't our first battle. This ain't our first struggle. This ain't our first problem. It's big and it hurts. I don't like it, amen. Bless me, Lord. But I'm glad God promised He wouldn't put more on the sweet bear. He'd make a way of escape. I'm glad He did on Calvary. Aren't you? Bless me, Lord. But He's brought us this far and He's not failed us yet. Amen. He's been faithful. Amen. But preacher, it hurts, I know. God didn't say it wouldn't hurt. But preacher, it's breaking my heart. I understand. God will put it together again. Amen. He beats us. Amen. amen. He takes good care of them. But you look back at all the things that you've faced, all the things you've been through in your life, as rough as they've been, as hard as they've been, as bad as it's been, God's not hurting. God's not pursuing. God's not a man. God's not faithful. He's been faithful. He's been faithful. He's given victory. Preacher, what are you saying? I'm saying this. It's time that we let the devil quit do all Stop doing all the talking. It's time that you and I stand up and tell him, hey, let me interrupt for just a minute. Yeah. I understand what you're saying and half of it's true because that's the way you talk, amen. Right. You'll tell a half truth. A half truth still a whole lie. Amen. Devil, I've heard enough. You're big, you're mean, you're tough, you're all those things that you say you are and so much more. But can I talk for just a minute? Verse 45 through 47, David got tired of hearing the devil speak, so he spoke up himself. Then, after all this, after he told him, I'm going to kill you, and the beast is going to eat you, and all this is going to happen, then said David to the Philistine, or to the devil, however you want to look at it, thou comest to me with a sword, sure, you've got a sword. You've got a spear, and we read how big it was, and how tough it is, and how mean that it is, so, so all those things. But I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God and the army of Israel, whom thou hast to fight. You're standing here and you're facing me, some little nothing, a little ruddy shepherd boy. I'm not a warrior. I'm not big. I'm not tough. I'm not mighty. I deserve to be in hell with my back broke. But honey, you're not fighting against me. You're fighting against my daddy, amen. And he owns a cat of a thousand hills and the hills to boot, amen. He's never lost a back. Amen. He's never lost a back. This day will the Lord deliver thee into my hand. Do you see that? I'm not going to deliver you. I'm not even going to touch you. And I will smite thee and take thine head from thee. And I will give the carcass of the host of the Philistines this day. Not only you. Not only am I going to kill you. I brought five stones down here. Your brothers is going to die too. And your sisters and the rest of your family. I'm going to kill you all, he said. Aren't you glad God takes care of your whole problem when He deals with it? He don't take care of just a little bit. Yeah. I'm glad He didn't partially save me or partially deliver me or partially provide for me, aren't you? He said, the carcass of all the Philistines. He said, you come down here to destroy me. He said, but you didn't come to fight against me. You come to fight against God, the one you attacked when you attacked His children. And not only is He going to give me you, but all your carcasses, they made. I'm going to smite you, and you're going to fall down. And when you fall down, I'm going to cut your head off. I preached this years ago when I first started preaching, so I didn't know about it. I would have thought of how to come out of hell when I took Saul's head. If you ever want to come out of hell, amen, just rise up early, be obedient to the Father, and the Father will give you free. That's free, too. Yeah, that's it. But first, he said that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. Notice he cursed him by his little G gods. 
when, when he cursed him. But he said, I want you to know there's a capital G God in Israel. And all this assembly, so, so the Philistines is going to know, the world's going to know, but sometimes he's got to remind his own people. Isn't it good that God's willing to remind us? Amen. I don't know how many times Peter wrote over there in the book of Peter. I write these things to you, not as a new commandment, but that I might stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance. He said, I just want to remind you, that's what revival is to that church. Just remembering who God is. Remember what He's capable of. Remember that He's faithful. Remember He loves you. Remember He still saves sinners. And remember He's still going to take care of you. Amen. That's who He is. That's what He does with you. But then he says that he's going to remind the church something too. And all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with sword and spear. Yes. But the next part is what we need to remember. For the battle is the Lord's. Amen. Right. The life that we live tonight, it's not my life, it's his life. He's coming, I might have life and I might have more abundantly. He's bought me with a price. I'm no longer my own. The life that I now live. Paul said, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. He said, yet not I live, but Christ liveth in me. And the life that I now live, I live by the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's Christ living in us tonight. So every battle that we face tonight, church, it's not your battle. It's not my battle. But it's His battle. That's right. And He's never lost a battle. Right. He's got a perfect record. He's batting a thousand. Bless you, Lord. The battle's the Lord's. Yeah. And He will give you in our hands. So he said, I want you to notice something. This battle night, it's not about Brother Rock. That's right. It's not about Brother Chris. It's not about Brother Wood. It's not about you as an individual. It's about the assembly of God. It's about the church as a whole. And your battle tonight is our battle as a group. Bear you one another's burdens. Thus fulfill the laws of Christ. That's what this prayer list is. That's what altar prayer is. That's what the prayer room is. Amen. Preach it. You'll get defeated and discouraged down and out trying to make it through by yourself. Yeah. See, when Saul, the Philistine didn't realize that he was going to fight the whole army of God when David <laughs> came down there because God was going to bring them together. Yeah. The devil doesn't seem so big when the army of God stands up. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. I remember when I was running around doing a lot of things I used to shouldn't have done. I didn't want to be by myself. I wanted a crowd with me, man. I at least want somebody big enough with me, Brother Ross. To, if I got myself in a mess, I'd say, uh, excuse me. I need a little help over here. Yeah, amen. See, there's times we get in messes and they're out of our control. But I'm glad he said, wherever thou go, I'll be with you. Amen. David said, if I make my bed in hell, God with me. We've got a faithful Savior. Yeah. The battle's not ours, it's his. We see the victory that it, the victory that it gives. And we realize this. Verse 48, I'm trying to close. Oh, you Lord. Preach you, Lord. And it came to pass when the Philistine arose and came and drew nigh to meet David, that David hasted and ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. The whole army's scared to death over here. He's not just running toward the Philistine. He's running toward the whole army. Amen. I think about a little bit of Jonathan might have come out of him when he went over and destroyed the whole garrison all by himself. Bless him, Lord. Bless him, Lord. I wonder what that Philistine's eyes must have looked like when a little ruddy shepherd boy came running out into a slingshot. Yeah. I bet the smile was leaving his face real quick, wasn't it? He let that stone fly, and when that stone flew at him, like, uh, Right before him. I don't know about you. He ain't only been hit in the head the same time. I never fell forward when I got hit in the head. I always fell back. God said, not only am I going to kill him, I'm going to make him bow down and worship me. Right. He falls upon his face and his feet. Amen. Yeah. David takes his sword and destroys it. Aren't you glad that God takes the devil's devices to destroy him with? Amen. Amen. Yes. Cuts his head off. Yeah. He picks that thing up and he rejoices. I'd like to take the head off some things that give me a hard time for a long time, wouldn't oh, you? Cool. Not people, not, not unlawful things. <laughs> Brother Gary looked up here at me like, oh, I might call somebody a detective. But said, no, 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 not like that. Well, I'm talking about situations and circumstances. I'm tired of fleeing. I'm tired of running. I'm tired of fearing. I'm tired of doubt. I'm ready to just take off with these things head on. Just remember the battles here. I'm ready to have some victory, aren't you? Yeah. 
Amen. I'm ready to shout the victory. I'm ready to, I'm ready to have some things. Not running from a battle, but running to it. No longer Preach. defeated, discouraged. Preach. But victorious in Christ our Lord. I want you to notice what happened. With the whole army. They sit down and give up. They're beating up on one another and all this stuff before the battle. But look in verse 52. And the men of Israel and Judah arose, a divided kingdom. And the men of Israel and Judah arose and shouted and pursued the Philistines until they came to the valley of the gates of Ekron and, and wounded the Philistines and fell down by the way of Securum, even unto Gath and unto Ekron. And the children of Israel returned from chasing after the Philistines and they spoiled their teams. Yeah. You know what just happened? They got back everything the devil took from the church. A long list tonight, Brother Ross. We sit down and start thinking about what the yeah. church once was, yeah. what the church once had, well, see, Lord. And what we give the devil. Yeah. 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 Preacher, what does all that mean? They just defeated their entire enemy, not just one of them. If they, David knew when he was going across that brook down there, if I don't kill all five of them brothers, one of them other giants is going to raise up and come back. So I'm just going to deal with it all at once. I want to preach one of these days, little things left undone and go through the Old Testament over what God told them to do when they went into Canaan. It would solve a lot of their problems. It solved a lot of yours and ours too. But either way, I ain't got time to deal with that. But notice God rewarded faithfulness even in the Old Testament. He reminded us, brother, whether there's a payday someday. There's a payday. We might have a heart broke. We might get beat. We might get battered. We might be pushed around. There might be things going on. I'm glad one day, Mr. Little Line, we're going to be able to stand up before him. Amen. And I would love to hear that saying, Well done, Amen, brother. thou good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. Now I'll make you ruler over me. Amen. Church, this ain't our first battle. Whatever it is you're facing and going through tonight, I'm not dumbing it down. I'm not belittling it. It hurts and it's real. You know it anymore. Because you're there living through it. But you're not alone. That's it, Lord. We're never alone. Amen. No matter where we go, we're never alone. We was going down to the beach this year, and I got that hub plane. I got at least two. Of course, there were five of us that went on the field. But I got to thinking, I wonder what it would be like if man got up there all by himself and got pulled over. The Lord, it was me. Not by myself. It probably would have been saying something. But it would be all right. We stand up there, Lord. I tried the best my obedience. I prayed the Spirit of God. I just tried to do what He have us do. I don't know what you're facing. I don't know what you're going through. God does. God knows. God knows exactly where you are. He knows what you.